If I told you there was a pedal on the market known as a sludge fest dominator, you'd probably assume that was going to be a very high gain pedal, right? Well, you would be right in assuming that because that name does make you think of high gain. Now, I'm the sort of player that doesn't really gravitate that much towards high gain pedals or high gain amps, purely because my background as a player, I come from playing blues, classic rock, and 80s rock, which is far less saturated. But in this video, I'm going to be checking out this thing. This is the Jupiter Effects Catastrophe, and this is a Sludgefest Dominator. So we're going to find out in this video what a Sludgefest Dominator is, and just how much gain this thing really has. So the Catastrophe is a Sludgefest Dominator, which, you know, that name might not mean a lot to you. It's basically a distortion pedal. It's from my good friend Chris at Jupiter Effects. Now, you've probably seen a few other videos I've done on Jupiter Effects products. He makes some really cool, really inspiring pedals. And even though Chris, as a player, loves sludge and he loves gain, his pedals can do a lot more than they sort of tell you on the tin. The Sludge Fest Dominator sounds like it's going to be super high gain, and it is high gain. There's a lot of gain in this thing, but it's a lot more versatile than the name leads on. So in this video, we're going to explore just how far we can push this thing the other direction. We're not going to focus on the high gain tones. We're going to see how low gain this thing can get. So before we start looking at the pedal, I just have to say this is a sponsored video. Chris has given me this pedal for the purpose of making this video. No money is exchanged hands and the views and opinions are my own, but Chris has very kindly provided me with this pedal. So even though this thing is called 
the Sludge Fest Dominator, it actually does way more than that name would actually suggest. It can get sludgy and it can really dominate things, but this is actually a really versatile pedal. So at its core, this is essentially a Marshall in a box that pedal. Chris has built this around some classic Marshall style amps. He's a big fan of JCM circuits. So there's a little bit of that pushed plexi crossed with a JCM kind of vibe in this thing, but with an extra 30% gain to make it go crazy. So he sort of voiced the EQ in that very British way. There's a mid hump. There's no mid control on the pedal because the pedal has enough mids on its own. In some of the lower gain settings, you can actually kind of evoke a tube screamer kind of thing as well, which is where it really speaks to me. Even though it is designed for high gain, some of the low gain tones in this are fantastic. Because this pedal is voiced like an amp, you can not only use it in front of your guitar amp as a drive pedal in its own right, but you could pair this with a cab sim pedal or a power amp and use this as your preamp. So if you're someone who's traveling light and you don't want to take an amp to a gig, you could pair this thing with an IR loader pedal, for instance, and plug it straight into the PA system, whereas this side of the pedal would act as your amp straight into a cab sim. Chris loves to make his pedals very, very versatile, so you can actually get a lot of tweakability out of this thing. So there's a lot going on on the surface of this pedal. Let's think about this as two separate sides. So these six knobs and this foot switch are one side of the pedal. This giant knob and this foot switch are the other side of the pedal. So on the top row here, we have our EQ section. So we've got bass, treble, and presence, just like you'd find on an amplifier. So here we can kind of fine tune our EQ of the pedal. And on the bottom row, we have level, gain, and low cut. Now the low cut is very useful if you're playing in some higher gain settings. You can back off some of the lows, especially useful if you're playing in a down tuned setup. Now I like the low cut to be pretty much left off because I like to retain that fatness in the drive. But if you're really pushing the gain and you're using a seven string or even a guitar that's detuned, you can kind of trim out some of that fat with a low cut to really fine tune it. This side of the pedal, something slightly different. This is Chris all over. Here we have an octave up mode. So this giant knob here just controls the gain of the octave circuit and you just turn it on and off here. This is the same octave circuit that is in the Jupiter Effects Silver Machine, which is actually one of my favorite octave fuzzes. So this isn't a fuzz. This is the octave circuit from that. So it's a much cleaner octave signal than an octave fuzz but obviously you're pairing it with the drive side of the pedal you're still going to get an overdriven octave sound it's a really great texture if you don't want a super fuzzy octave up thing going on this is a really nice alternative to that because it's crisper and it's a little bit more cutting it would really cut through in a band mix on stage if you're someone who really likes tweaking you can also pop the back off this and there's some additional stuff inside you can tweak there are some high cut switches in there there's a post gain trim pot where you can match this perfectly with whatever setup you're using. And there are some things to control the dry level as well. I'm not gonna mess about with anything inside for now. We're just gonna talk about what's on the outside. But if you're someone who does like tweaking, is some additional stuff in there you can play with. So I'm gonna plug this in now and we'll see what it can do. I did say we're gonna focus mainly on the lower gain tones, but I will dive into some of the higher gain things as well as we go. We can't talk about a pedal called the Sludge Fest Dominator without using a pink Strat. So I'm gonna be using my Schecter Nick Johnston traditional to start off with. This is plugged into the Blackstar Studio 10 6L6, which is running completely clean. There's also a real spring reverb in line with the amp, so it's going in front of the amp, which is the Surfy Industries Surfy Bear Classic and I'm using the Two Notes Torpedo Captor X for my cab sound today. So here's how the amp sounds completely clean. So that's pretty much as clean as you'd expect a single coil loaded guitar into a 6L6 amp to sound. So on the Catastrophe, I have got the treble and bass and presence controls all set straight up at 12 o'clock and the gain is set to 12 o'clock. The low cut is currently on zero, so that's completely off. And the volume I've got sort of about 10 o'clock. Chris recommends you start this with a volume on full. We're not gonna go there because that's pretty loud. I will also use the octave control in a bit as well. But we'll talk about that separately. So I'm just gonna play a little bit now with the current settings. So everything at midnight, give or take the things that I said aren't at midnight. And I'm just gonna tweak it from low gain and we'll push the gain a little bit and see where it goes. 
So straight away, even just with a gain on halfway, that is way too much gain for me personally. I would never use that much gain in my own playing. <laughs> So yeah, as I said, this thing's got plenty of gain on tap, even with single coils. Now, that's way more gain than I'm ever going to need. I actually really like the way it sounded, though, when the gain was just above zero. Bit of a bass hump there, take some of the top end off because it's quite bright. And we do get in that kind of fat tube screamery kind of ballpark. <laughs> That's actually a tone I really, really like, and I would use that tone quite a lot. Whether or not Chris designed it to do that is another story, but that's actually a tone I'm really into. Now, this side of the pedal is where the fun starts. So this is the octave upside. Now, this control here basically just controls the amount of octave. So when it's all the way down, you get no octave, and obviously when it's all the way up, you get the maximum amount. In my opinion, when you're playing with octaves, I mean, you just want it all there. So you can dial it back and be a bit more subtle, but to me, when you use an octave fuzz or an octave up kind of thing with a drive tone, you want that to be present. So let's just hear what that sounds like. <laughs> Thank you. 
Of course it can get pretty gamey there's a lot of cool tones there it's not fuzzy because it's not an octave fuzz so you do get a little bit of a a clearer octave signal i think rather than an octave fuzz where the fuzz can kind of be overwhelming sometimes what is a slight downside is that you can't switch the octave on independently so if you're playing and you turn the octave on it doesn't make a difference but as soon as you engage the drive side the octave is instantly engaged. I would personally like to see the option to unlink the octave up just so it could be paired with other things as well, but that really is a minor point there. The low cut is really cool. Like I said, if you're going to be playing downtune stuff or you're using a real kind of bass heavy sound, you can trim off some of that excess low. For me personally, the low cut isn't really something I'm using, especially with this guitar because I'm using single coils. So I actually like to have the lows fully present and I've actually boosted the lows a little bit there to suit my own kind of tone as well. All right, so now we're gonna hear some humbucker tones. I'm using my Stanford Guitars Crossroad Marquee, which is a Les Paul style guitar with two humbuckers, but this is semi-hollow, so it kind of has a bit of a 335 style crossover. Now on the pedal, I've reset the gain and the EQ back to midnight. So I'm gonna play a bit and tweak this and hear how it sounds. <laughs>
So with humbuckers, you can get even more gain out of this thing. Obviously, I had it on full there. To my ears, the gain is a little dark when you crank it, so actually having the presence and the treble controls really helps bring out some of the high end there. It's still not as gainy as the name would suggest, but Chris does recommend pairing this with a high gain amp as well. You can get into some sort of classic rock and sort of metal territories there with that gain sound, though that is with the drive on full. You could play metal with that thing. But for me personally, where that does really shine again is in some of those lower gain sounds. Push the bass a bit, bring the treble and presence back slightly, and you just get this really great pushed plexi kind of vibe. <laughs> Now we need to look at the octave mode. So I'm just going to set the gain at about halfway there and we'll tweak the octave. It's currently on full at the moment. I'll just play a bit and move around with it. completely maxed it still doesn't get too spluttery like an octave fuzz would you get a lot of very usable tones there you can still have the gain slightly lower and dial in some of those slightly more classic octave fuzz sounds by rolling the neck pickup volume back <laughs> but without the kind of oversaturation that you get from a fuzz. If you're someone who wants to experiment with that sound, this could be a really interesting addition to your collection because it allows you to experiment with that octave up sound without the intensity of having too much extra gain. You can just have the gain available on the cat strofa, or you can set the gain quite low like I've done here and kind of use it like a tube screamer with an octave up. This is actually super versatile because you can actually have those different sounds. So you can have that classic rock crunch and then add the octave. And it makes for a really interesting different texture there. You could use that as a lead boost and it's sort of not like anything else in your arsenal. I'm a really big fan of the fact that you can get a lot of those classic sounds from this pedal, even though, as I've mentioned a few times, the name kind of suggests that it's going to be super high gain. And it is high gain, there's a lot of gain on tap, 
but it doesn't put you off if you're someone like me who prefers lower gain tones. So you guys should check this thing out, whether you're looking for something super high gain or like me, you just want a tube screamery kind of vibe with an octave up. This is a really cool pedal to check out. There's going to be some links down below in the description where you can check out all the stuff that Chris is currently doing. He's got a bunch of cool pedals. There's a couple of other demos on the channel as well of his reverb, the kaleidoscope, and also the octave side of this built into a fuzz pedal known as the silver machine, which is one of my favorite octave fuzzes. So go check those out as well. Go give the guys at Jupiter Effects some love. They're making some really cool stuff. I really like this pedal. I'm a really big fan of the fact that it is super versatile. It's not just a sludge fest dominator, as the name would imply. Even though it does have all that gain on tap, which initially did put me off slightly, it's actually more versatile than the name would actually lead on, which is why I wanted to make this video with Chris's blessing to actually show you guys that this thing can do the low gain thing insanely well. And you can pair this with a Strat and it works. You don't have to play high gain. You don't have to play metal. You can take the Jupiter effect Catastrophe and you can play blues licks with it and it works insanely well. So yeah, I'm a big fan of this thing. I actually really want to gig test this now. So I think this is going to find its way onto one of my pedal boards over the next few months because I want to see how this performs in a band situation. I think it'll be great because even though, as I said, it's got so much gain on tap, I'm going to be using it for lower gain sounds, but I think there's a lot of really cool tones in there that really kind of speak to me as a player, as well as those of you who are watching who love the high gain stuff. So yeah, check it out. There's a bunch of links down below in the description where you can see all the other stuff that Chris does. Check out his website and his socials. Go give those guys some love. Let me know what you guys think about the sound of this pedal. Throw that down below in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks for watching.